Welcome back, my friends. Currently, we're on day 239 of Russia's disastrous invasion of Ukraine. And today's top story is that Russia has begun a Kherson evacuation as Ukrainian forces continue to advance towards the city. Now, this isn't a real evacuation. This is a mass deportation of Ukrainian citizens who have been living under Russian military occupation for eight months now. And this deportation was ordered by Russia's Surovikin. And he's saying he has to do this because his forces in Ukraine are under tremendous pressure. Who is this man? This is the new Russian general in charge of the entire war in Ukraine. And on social media, people have noticed the similarity between him and Dr. Evil from the Austin Powers movies. I've watched a couple clips of this man speaking, and he looks like an idiot. More than likely, in a month or two, he'll probably be liquidated by Vladimir Putin, as this war is not going to get better for the Russian forces. I'll link this clip down below, along with all the clips I always show you in my videos. But in this clip, he's speaking to reporters, stating that the Ukrainian forces advancing on the city are poorly equipped, poorly trained, low morale, and their new recruits immediately being tossed on the front lines. That's why they're evacuating her son. Apparently in Russia, every day is opposite day when talking to the media. And we know that this is true, that they're going to abandon the city of Kherson because they've been talking about this on Russian state media. You don't get to float these ideas like evacuation or abandoning uh, a city that you claim now belongs to Russia unless the Kremlin has already made the decision to do so. Let's watch about 20 seconds of this clip from Russian state TV. Корреспондент Комсомольской правды, наш друг и товарищ Александр Коц на прямой связи. Саш, понятно, Херсон, понятно, там все тяжело. С чем связаны основные наши тревоги? Есть ли информация, разведданные по поводу украинской группировки, которая собрана там в кулак? Сколько человек, какая техника, к чему готовятся? Есть ли понимание, как будут действовать? Почему мы решили... Why did we decide to transport our people out of there? So Russian state media is framing this like a good thing, a strategic retreat, as Russia is mobilizing for a more intense war, they will, you know, eventually reclaim this territory from Mother Russia. It's not going to happen, but that's how the media is going to report it. But in the meantime, Russia is mass deporting about 10,000 Ukrainian civilians every day to the south bank of the river. And this is what the mass deportation looks like. There's a, a Russian journalist on the ground. Let's watch about 30 seconds of this clip together. <laughs> The weather in Ukraine is starting to look cold. And it's not just civilians being deported. The proper Russian military itself is retreating across the river. From the north bank to the south bank, they're doing this with ferries, and they're doing this with a recently reconstructed pontoon bridge. Russia completes the pontoon bridge across the Dnipro River in Kherson. The bridge's completion comes as Russia orders citizens out of the city of Kherson, which could complicate Ukrainian efforts to destroy the crossing. So here is the pontoon bridge constructed next to the uh, thoroughly... Uh, damaged Anatovsky Bridge, and it's kind of debatable whether or not the Ukrainians want to destroy this. 
And you can see from previous attempts, there have been either Excalibur rounds or High Mars missiles that have punched through the proper bridge to strike the pontoon bridge. But if more military uh, Russian forces nets are retreating across the river rather than going the other direction to resupply Russian forces, Ukraine might view this as a good thing and they might uh, hold off on destroying the pontoon bridge to allow the Russians to properly retreat. Now here is the conundrum, here's the concern, here is what might be coming over the next week or two. According to the Institute for the Study of War, Russia is setting the stage for a false flag operation near the city of Kherson. So this is pure speculation. I'm giving you my thoughts on what could happen. But it definitely looks like Russia wants to uh, finally withdraw from the north bank of this river and then sever all connections. And to do this, they would have to destroy the Novokokovka hydroelectric power plant. If they did that, it would release the reservoir. Uh, all of this region down here would, would flood. Uh, so what Russia would do is they would abandon the city of Kherson, which is on the north bank of the river. They would wait for Ukrainian forces and Ukrainian vehicles and whatever to come into the city. It's at that point they would then blow the hydroelectric power dam, release the reservoir, flood the city and try to damage or kill as many Ukrainian military forces as possible. Russia views this as a loss anyways, so I'm sure they're getting desperate or coming up with creative ideas. And more than likely, they don't even think that they can hold the hydroelectric power dam. The only reason why they really don't want to do this is because you can see the entrance for the canal that feeds fresh water to Crimea it's, it's on the other side of the dam, so if the reservoir is released, more than likely the water, uh, the water source to Crimea would be kaput. It's not coming back. And I think Russia has just accepted this. Uh, once again, they don't think they can hold this. If they blow the dam and they blow their own pontoon bridge, Ukrainian military forces are not getting across this river. This river will become a nice natural barrier that neither side will be able to advance on. Yes, you'll still have units in the area. Yes, they might still shell each other across the river, but nobody's getting across with heavy equipment. So what Russia wants is they want to reallocate these forces, which are taking horrendous losses, and they want to move them to the Zaporizhia front, or the Kharkiv front, or the Donbass front. But two can play this game. If Russia pulls out and reallocates forces, then Ukraine can take all of their forces currently putting pressure on the North Bank and also reallocate them. Russia is just desperate and they're willing, they're capable of doing anything at this point. And for anyone out there who says, no, Jake, Russia would never destroy uh, a hydroelectric power plant, that is clearly a war crime. That's kind of Russia's entire military strategy at the moment. Russia attacks, uh, Russian attacks on power plants spur emergency actions. With nearly a third of Ukrainian power plants having been attacked by Russia, President Zelensky is ordering electricity supply restrictions. So electricity in Ukraine, as of today, there are scheduled blackouts and brownouts to conserve electricity. Uh, we've already heard from other YouTubers like Operator Starsky, Anna from Ukraine, or Dennis Davidoff that they might not be able to post on YouTube daily anymore because they might not have electricity. This is Russia's uh, entire game plan, and they're being honest and open about it. Here is Russian State TV. We're going to watch the first 30 seconds of this clip. But this Russian military analyst is explaining what the Russian military is attempting to do by targeting Ukraine's electrical grid. So 
So that's it. Russia is trying to destroy Ukraine's uh, electric power plants and electrical grid so that uh, Ukraine loses electricity so they can't have proper water sanitation uh, recycling the water supply. They don't want Ukrainians to have clean drinking water to uh, drink and cook with. So their master strategy, this is the world's second most powerful military, is they want to create a epidemic of waterborne diseases and waterborne pathogens because Ukraine can't properly clean its drinking water. I mean, I'm just going to pause here for a second because this is insane. Uh, the Russian military has no expectations of defeating the Ukrainian military. So they're targeting the civilian population. They want 40 million Ukrainian civilians to not have clean drinking water or heat this winter. So this is the response from Europe and NATO. Uh, priority number one is air defense systems. Uh, Germany stepped up with the delivery of these Iris Ts. They're already uh, intercepting drones and, and Russian cruise missiles. In addition, Spain has uh, donated additional air defense systems. NASAMs from the United States should be delivered this week or next. And if the uh, air defense systems can do their job and stop the attacks, I am personally confident that Europe can help Ukraine restore its electrical grid so that Russia's strategy doesn't, doesn't happen. Spain has already announced they're sending generators to Ukraine to help with their electricity crunch. I'm sure they're going to get additional uh, maybe parts and equipment and maybe even personnel to make sure that uh, their electrical grid maintains, uh, can, can, can continue to function. And the most recent attacks this week have been done with Iranian kamikaze drones. Russia went to Iran about two months ago to mass purchase all of these uh, somewhat cheap kamikaze Iranian drones. Each unit costs about $20,000. So more than likely, Iran is going to continue manufacturing these drones and delivering them to Russia. And it's not just the drones. Uh, it's been confirmed that Iran has instructors. They have military personnel in Crimea, in the occupied territories, to train and provide support for Russian forces. So my personal opinions on Iran at this point, I have zero sympathy for them. Uh, in the past, I was open to the idea of softening relations between the United States and Iran, but Iran has shown its true colors, uh, willingly supplying kamikaze drones to Russia that are being used on Ukrainian civilians. Uh, Iran, Iran's government at this point is irredeemable to me. And we know these are Iranian drones because uh, Russia was dumb enough to admit it during a hot mic moment. So here is a clip from Russian state TV, and a Russian analyst is going to be interviewed by this female Russian news broadcaster, and he didn't realize his microphone was on, and he quick tells her to not mention the drones are from Iran because the Russian government doesn't want to admit it. Как в принципе изменится мировой рынок, спросим у эксперта в нашей студии Руслан Пухов, директор Центра анализа стратегии и технологий, член общественного совета при Министерстве обороны России. Руслан Николаевич. We all know they're Iranian, but the authorities did, did not want to admit it. I don't know, maybe this guy will get fired. He's an idiot. So how is uh, mobilization going? And the Kremlin is saying that mobilization is not over yet. I don't think mobilization will ever be over as long as uh, Putin remains in power. But the Kremlin has probably mobilized more than 200,000 Russian men. I'm confident uh, these mobilization waves will continue until Putin has more than a million men uh, mobilized into the Russian military on the front lines in Ukraine. So with Russian civilians, anger mounts as 
Russian draftees continue to be thrown into battle without proper training and proper equipment. Scapegoats are already being identified. The purge has begun. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Malik, placed in charge of Putin's botched mobilization effort, has been found dead in his residence in the Far East. A police investigation has been launched and a verdict of suicide has not been ruled out. I think over the coming weeks and months, as the Russian public is furious with how the war is going, more and more men like uh, this gentleman right here will be found uh, missing or, or, or uh, expired in their own apartments. And as far as the Russian people, the Russian civilians, I'm going to share this uh, clip with you so you can feel the emotion of one woman. This is a Russian mother on a bus just crying in front of strangers, uh, saying, Oh my boy, oh my boy, Ukraine be cursed. Let's watch about 40 seconds of this together. <laughs> I cannot feel sorry for this Russian mother. There were hundreds of thousands of other Russian mothers smart enough to help their sons of military age escape the country. That son also had the option to refuse service and go to jail. But also, this woman and every other Russian civilian who allowed Putin to remain in power for 20 years to build up to this point, it's their fault. They have to share responsibility. There are, at this point, tens of thousands of Ukrainian mothers who have lost their sons defending their country, uh, defending their homes. So until this war is over, I can't have sympathy for these Russian people who are suffering. They have to suffer until they wake up and uh, put an end to Putin's war. Another example of Russian mothers uh, just being disillusioned, here's a clip from a Ukrainian journalist who exclusively interviews uh, Russian prisoners of war. He has a YouTube channel that gets lots of views. And here's a viral moment uh, as he attempts to call this Russian prisoner of war's mother. This is her reaction to learning her son has been captured and is in Ukrainian hands. Добрый день, меня зовут Владимир, я журналист из Украины, ваш сын находится в плену, вы знаете об этом? Нет, да. Вы хотите... Не знаю, вы х... никак не может посадиться в плену, потому что я вчера с ним только разговаривала. Не может такого быть. Подождите. Да? Интересно. Да. Вы... Интересно, мне тоже интересно. Скажите кодовое слово, если мой сын в плену. Да. Я, конечно, не думаю, что вы в этой ситуации можете что-то требовать от меня. Если вы не хотите... Вы всегда разводите всех, это нам давно известно. Ваша фашистская страна. Угу, понял. А как вы, вас разводят? Да не так. Вы знатной модной. Сейчас в военкомат поеду и все узнаю. Пошли вы в жопу. Я, я понял. Как вас разводят? Как вас разводят с Украины? Вы можете объяснить? Она не желает с вами общаться? Пошли вы жопу. Еще, еще вы мне скажете? Да, это в езду, что могу сказать. Это точно голова? Это она, да. Голос ее на очки. Она также. There's a lot we could say about the reaction of that Russian mother to learning her son has been captured by the Ukrainians. But what actually interests me the most about this interview is the comfortable and relaxed body language of this Russian prisoner of war. I don't know if he was recently mobilized or if he's been fighting in Ukraine for months, but this Russian man just seems very relaxed, very comfortable, and you can you can see the relief in his body language that he's 
happy or glad to not be fighting for the Russians anymore, not not have to not have to die in Ukraine. The final clip I have to share with you is a, a feel-good one for the Ukrainians. This clip is of Ukrainian women, uh, wives, mothers, and sisters, who are uh, canning and cooking uh, halibutsi. This is stuffed cabbage rolls that they're then jarring and then sending to Ukrainian defenders on the front lines. They do it with so much love, which is definitely felt by the troops on the front lines. Let's watch about uh, a minute of this clip together. Ми чекаємо наших хлопців з перемогою, і ми вже їх вже тут так нагодуємо. Тому що те, що ми робимо, це найменше, що ми можемо для них зробити, тому що вони кожен день дали з нами житло. Ми вже на військовому і сама знаю, що наші хлопці їдять. Ну, що можна ще в полі їсти? Чай, якщо є можливість попити не самі віно якусь і все. А от так от відкрили баночку голодців і вже не ївся. Мій чоловік завжди казав, що наші голодці не смішніші. Він взяв у нас одну парку і відвіз хлопців. Каже, хлопці не був добре побували. That's all for this update video. Glory to the heroes, glory to Ukraine. If you found this video informative, give me a thumbs up. Best way to support my channel. If you have any comments or questions, let me know down below. I love hearing from you guys. Till the next video, take care, be safe.